be careful but be aggressive as well. Whiskey fire, contact explosion. You know. Here we go again. That could have been fucking us, like. I can't fucking cope. I can't cope. If I was the enemy, I'd be here as no. I always feel app apprehensive. I think if you're not apprehensive, there's something wrong. The Taliban will probably never get into their heads as the British Army don't give up. These are the road warriors. Soldiers who carry the weight of British operations in Afghanistan upon their shoulders. And this is the British Army's light gun. Vital to operations, it can smash targets 11 miles away. But without shells, it would just be scrap metal. The road warriors deliver the ammo. They supply everything the army needs. The army, you can't really survive without the Royal Logistic Corps, like the Taliban will be taken over. From their base at Camp Bastion, they journey to outposts that are just minutes away by helicopter but takes soul-destroying days to reach by truck. In a conflict where the front line is everywhere. Like every time you go outside the wire, you're in a war zone. The road warriors have left Camp Bastion on a four-day mission to resupply forward operating base Edinburgh and the British base at Musakala. This extra mile, we look at what happened. See how soldiers of the Royal Logistic Corps relax in the desert and run the gauntlet into the insurgent heartland of Musakala. The convoy is in what Afghans call Dashti Margo, the desert of death. Road warrior Lance Corporal Lisa West is the only woman driver on this 100 vehicle operation. My grandfather was in the Royal Engineers. I was the first person out of my whole family to follow in his footsteps. It was between joining the army and um, going into caring, helping old age pensioners. Lisa's engaged to another Lance Corporal, Carl Cracknell. I had a drunken snog with him. And we've pr pretty much been together ever since. Carl crews an armed Land Rover that protects the convoy. There he is. There's my baby. <laughs> oh, yeah! I'm getting married in December, and hopefully we're going to live happily ever after. <laughs> Just can't wait. That's all I can think about. It's what keeps me going out here. Lisa always has Carl's safety in mind. I mean, look at him. No, no chance if you hit a mine or a IED in them. IEDs scare me. Because you don't know if you're going to hit it, and when you do, you're going to know nothing about it. And when you're doing the job that I have to do, you can't really keep in the track. You have to break track, and then that's when it does go through your mind. The Taliban are desperate to attack the convoys with roadside bombs, called improvised explosive devices, or IEDs. Oh, Dr. Call signs. This is a Roman 34 Alpha. Prepare to halt, 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 bomber. Delta One, acknowledge order. Which must be found and cleared before they kill. The guys at the front, they just got bomber, so they're just clearing the route, just to check we've got no IEDs laying down the ground. Op Barmer checks for hidden mines. It's a long, laborious, and very dangerous task. 
Yeah, just want to tell him just we're going to move forward. Oh my God. Careful when you get down there to fuck in. All right. The worst bit. All right. Cheers. They're only six miles from the base at Edinburgh, their first destination. It really, really worries me because we're just sat here in a truck, obviously driving about, and there could be an IED sat there. But it's going to be a long night. Yeah. What was that? Stop! 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 Give him a stop, stop, stop! Stop! Hello, stations, this is Roman 3 for Alpha. Stop, stop, stop. That sounded like an ID, that. Just one bang. Just pass me the radio, please. Thank you. Uh, room two for Alpha. There was a there was a bang there, and no vehicles um, involved in any incident back there. Over. All call signs. This is whiskey fire. Contact explosion. Wait out. Delta twenty eight. Hit IED. Wait out. Fuck me now. Here we go again. Bastards. Uh, room three for Alpha, we've heard nothing uh, yet. Um, just still waiting to hear. Over. There's been an explosion on it. That is about 400 metres to the rear of the CLT, or the, before the body. Oh, you're not joking. Uh, room three for Alpha, uh, Roger G, hello, three for Charlie, this is three for Alpha. Right. Who's actually been hit? What that little call sign is it? Hey. Just quickly see if that fucking radio's on, because I've lost I've lost comms. The truck in front of Lisa has struck a mine. Hey, right, lads, you all right? Yeah. Which wagon is it? It's this one over here, start at 28. Put your lights on. Put your lights on. Put my lights on. Can you relay to uh, Titanium call sign? We've had an IED strike on uh, Delta 28. Delta 28. Sorry, Roger. Uh, there's no casualties, just a bit sh shook up, which I think me and Rob are as well. Uh, everybody seems to be fine. Uh, we've got the medics looking at uh, uh, the passengers. Uh, we're going to make an assessment of us so far. The truck's crew escaped with minor injuries. The truck is decimated. You know, hitting an IED and not having any injuries is, uh, is quite an unusual occurrence. So we're, we're very lucky and we'll, we'll wait and see, make sure that these boys are all right, because no doubt they'll be shook up. We've got a mechanic and a recovery uh, vehicle going back to check it out. Apache attack helicopters are now above the convoy to deter further attacks. He's providing overwatch because these little bastards might come out now and just uh, think it's all Christmas at once. Start fucking throwing whatever else they've got at us. As soon as he can, Carl checks Lisa's okay. Alright. Hello. You okay? I've been worrying about you. Don't worry about me, bro. Alright. You're not going in front of us, are you? That's me. Yeah, I know, but you're not driving in front of me, are you? No, the. Um... I want you to go behind me, Carl. No, the Mastiff's going, leading us out. But I want you to go behind me. Babe, don't worry. No, I can't fucking cope watching you, babe. Don't worry. 
Right, they're safe now. That could have been fucking us, like. Yeah, it's be a I can't fucking fast. cope. I can't cope. What do you know about me all the time? And I can't have you driving yeah, in front of me. It was you. Right, we're going. Alright, I'm going to have to go, alright? See you in a bit. Don't worry, i Like um, visions of him being in front of me and him going over a mine, like. The soldiers were incredibly lucky to survive. Their truck took most of the blast. Earlier in the day, a bigger IED was cleared that would have blown them to pieces. Finally, the road warriors arrive at the Edinburgh Desert Base. It's a big relief because you think, yes, I'm safe. The first leg of a long operation is complete. We're all here safely. Um, no one's hurt, um, but a lot of tired eyes and a lot of tired heads. The night's rest lifts their spirits. Some of the boys let off steam. <laughs> While Lisa and Carl practice married life. The boy in the bag, ration pack. Bacon, beans and omelette or something. What have you got? Yeah, bacon omelette and beans. It's not. It's not one of the better ones. <laughs> There's a sandstorm pretty much all night. My car was sleeping the wrong way, so all the sand got in the sleeping bag. Yeah, we all woke up looking rather dusty this morning. Yeah, just chill out for the day now. It all tastes the same to me, every ration pack. Yesterday, after being on the road for 23 hours, I was just absolutely knackered. I think I threw my teddy and I was gone. Morale was low. <laughs> we had um, an IED strike. Obviously, with her going past, initial thought was, shit, that's her. I think I caused them more worry. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm, I'm, you know, I don't worry about myself. I was only worrying about you because you're mm. driving around in that stupid little thing. Just the worry of him hitting a mine or an IED. I always know where she is, so I've got a close eye on her somewhere. Make sure she's safe. That's what people don't understand, because they all think, yeah, it's brilliant because we see each other every day. But they have not got the slightest clue what it's like to be out on the ground together, having to worry about each other. Lisa and Carl have had a chance to relax. But even in a safe area, the convoy commander never knows what's next. The enemy we're up against is, is it, they're, you know, very resourceful, uh, ruthless and, and very determined. Um, and with the IED, it's sort of like a, a sleeping enemy um, that can rest there 24 seven without anyone else. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> and that's Corporal Brown. Uh, soon to be last couple, Brown. Um, they're on a bit of a high. You know, it's good to see them like that, and that's just part and parcel of command. The road warriors are at the British base at Edinburgh, surrounded by rough terrain that funnels troops into Taliban ambushes. Roadside bombs slowed down the convoy, turning an 18-hour journey into a 24-hour nightmare. What was that? Sorry, this is whiskey fire, contact explosion. I can't fucking cope. I can't cope. Fuck me now. Here we go again. 
Last night it was emotional. We got in here in the end. First two drops there. Staff yeah, Sergeant Lee Davis is responsible for getting the right loads to the right place, down to the last bullet and tin of beans. Welsh and proud, mate. For Lee, the stress began two days ago, before he left Camp Bastion. They, they changed yeah, I'm, I'm not arguing. Yeah, no. What I'm saying is, is there a cut off time? <laughs> Glad to work in their arse off there. We're supposed to be on the stand down now, but obviously fucking not because trucks are all over the place. Everyone's not happy. Sex commands are moaning, which is rightly, and I'm pissed off as well. Fucking hell. This fucks me off. Fucking people fucking phoning. I'll be working all fucking day now. This is what fucking pisses me off. We're supposed to, you know, I ain't driving tonight, but we're still fucking going out at the same time. And I still won't get no fucking sleep. Fucking hell. Finally, Lee got the convoy ready. Now Lee is at Edinburgh, preparing for the next leg of the mission, to resupply the British base at Musakala. It might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, <laughs> but I'll fucking get you. Sergeant Major Mark Larry Lumsden is responsible for discipline and is the convoy commander's right-hand man. Just as a fucking tool. I'm going to put my wee hips thing on the top so that all these wee jinglies know they're not allowed to shoot me because I'm from Edinburgh. It's a bit dodgy. There's been a little bit of small arms firing in Musicala this morning. The route is well known for ID and placements, the, the anticipation, the adrenaline's going a little bit. The Taliban know there's only one way in and out of Musakala. Route Green. Hello, all Delta call signs. This is Roman 34 Al Afar. Um, there has been a, an ID find on Route Green. It's imperative that you make sure that all the drivers are aware and that they follow in the tracks. As well as the threat of roadside bombs, there's a deep wadi to negotiate when they leave Edinburgh for Musakala. It's going to take a bit of time getting 40 vehicles down into the wadi, which is quite steep. It's what you call a proper wadi, isn't it, Scotty? Yeah. Fucking abseil off them. Don't call signs, don't call signs. When uh, coming down the hill into the wadi, make sure you're in, uh, you're in first gear and uh, try to use your retarders if they are working. Delta 9, acknowledge over. Delta 1, 7, acknowledge. Delta 2, 5, acknowledge over. Roger, roger. You see the hole in a minute where they took the IED out of the gun. Knowing there's no alternative route to Musakala, the Taliban bury bombs like this. For, for the, you know, knowing exactly what our roots are. All vehicles making good progress through the body. Uh, rugby seats for office, anyway. Outposts help keep the wadi secure from attack. These boys guys out here, they work hard. They've got no, uh, no air conditioning, no... No, no fancy say, uh, burger bars or coffee shops or any of the shit that some of the camps have got. You know, however long they spend up here at a time, but it's hard work for them. This is what the Afghans consider going out for a family bike ride, like. Four of them on that fucking motorbike. Look, right, mum and dad and the two kids. Out right for a day out. <laughs> Road warriors are safely out of the wadi and heading into Musakala. Musakala used to be a Taliban stronghold, um, and now Musakala is a key area just to ensure um, the continued influence of the government of Afghanistan. Things getting a wee bit busy. This is the busiest I've ever seen Afghanistan, to be fair. 
Yeah. Salam. Oh. Stop picking your nose. Oh. And it makes a change of bit seem something different than just dust and sand. We've just gone through a bit of water. Just to see that for a few days. Got the kids swimming here. Yeah. Quite deep, there's loads of kids swimming. What I wouldn't do for that. What I wouldn't do for that. Look at it. Lovely that is. Although in a war zone over 3,000 miles from home, there's plenty to remind soldiers of their families. You'd love to throw sweets now at them, but the problem is they'll go running towards it and start fighting over it. And potentially, you know, one of them could fall under the wheels of the vehicles. So, unfortunately, we can't do it. For water. I feel actually shady um, when the kids come up not giving sweeties and that. Nobody wants to see kids struggling. I think these kids don't look as if they're particularly, you know, undernourished or anything, but it would just be nice to give them some a treat. In 2007, after bitter fighting, British troops took Musakala from the Taliban. The Taliban wanted back. Not everybody's happy about us being here, I reckon. We're getting into the DC. DC being district centre, and this is what tries to control all the enemy forces around here. Two Delta 32, uh, when you uh, do come into the DC, just inform myself over. It's, as soon as you get in, helm off. Tucked behind the ramparts of Musakala, the road warriors can relax a little. Right, you got two reefers then, sir. So far, so good. So we've got it on the pen. Do the rations are going to the bottom one, OK, where colour map is. The troops based in Musakala will get fresh food and mail for the first time in weeks. It is a very basic location, um, but it's, it's, it's OK. The boys are OK settled here. Um, they do the job that they need to do and everything, and they, uh, they enjoy their time and quality of, uh, quality of life here that we have got. There'll be mail inside these um, trucks, which will bring a, a smile to their faces, and also there's fresh rations in there. Fresh rations incoming will always bring a smile to the soldiers' faces. I'm starving and it's fucking roasting. Where's Stevie? That's good. Just go along, see how they're doing, see how they're getting on. See if I can lend a hand. Larry's vehicle has visitors. He's in the kids there for a little bit of water. That's a mouse, isn't it? <laughs> Blanca. Even he didn't fucking like me. The road warriors have crossed a dangerous wadi to resupply the British base at Musakala. They must return by the same route and know that once again Taliban are waiting for them. The supplies have been offloaded and the convoy is good to go. Let's get going and we'll be lost out. Same as on the way up, make sure we're all switched on top to cover up. Go through the wadi. Be careful but be aggressive as well. Let's go! Delta 2-5, just uh, give me a confirmation once you start moving over. Hotel 1, yeah, you can move up now. Belt call signs, belt call signs. That's my vehicle now leaving location. Uh, Hello, Roman T4 Alpha. This is Roman T4 Bravo. Over. The return journey retraces their steps to the base at Edinburgh, then on home to Camp Bastion. Is that killed the engine down? I'm sure Top Gear would like me just first. Top Gear of buses compared to this. Exactly. That's the last of the vehicles leaving the um, uh, DC. The convoy is now back in ambush country. You just watch your left. Yeah, I am, I'll, I'll, I'll get the right. He's 
dodgy areas, well, pretty dodgy. If you've got a suicide bomb, it's nice and closed. It can come out of anywhere, really, not going to be able to fucking react to it. Well, life would be so much easier if it was a classic uh, war fighting, you know, type enemy. Enemy you can see. It's half the battle, isn't it? This guerrilla warfare, they, you know, they're good at it, they know what they're doing. They've had years and years of practice at it. I mean, they kicked the Russians' ass, didn't they? And this place is a fucking shithole. Here, it's not just the Taliban that threaten life. How low is that cable, sir? Can we get under that? Room in 3-4, echo, 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 echo. Move a group of Afghan children approach a mastiff. They run off. Something's wrong. Somebody should jump out and see what's happening. Right. You alright? Yeah. The vehicle's antenna has hit a power cable. 3 4 Charlie, this is 3 4 Alpha. Uh, yeah, just had a bit of an issue up here. Uh, Whiskey 6 has he's had a bit of shock uh, through the head from an overhead cable. A soldier has severe electrical burns. We flight. He's been flight. Let's get up here. But in this hostile territory, they can't stop. He's got no comms now, sir. Yes, but I just tell him to stay right up with us. Yeah, yeah, stay right behind us. He's, uh, he's uh, moved on now. He, he's got medic in the other end, maybe. The casualty must be treated on the move. And as they descend into the wadi, Lee and Larry see a potential enemy threat. This way you have to be careful because there's fucking little bastards on motorbikes and that. That's their main thing, what they use them in vehicles, obviously, for suicide bombers. Can't allow vehicles to get in between our vehicles. You know, if they got in between our vehicles, they could quite easily just drive into one of the fuel tankers or something, that'd be us all. We'd all have a really, really fucking shit day. And then there's another problem. Uh, hello, Roman 3 for Charlie. It's a 3 for Alpha. Over. If you just put in a short halt there, uh, my call sign's having a bit of trouble. Larry's truck has lost power. OC's truck's broken. Can't see a bastard thing. It's not accelerating, did you say? No. See, this would be ideal. If I was the enemy, I'd be hitting us now, because we're all static. Larry's truck still won't start. What's happening, mate? What's wrong with it? We don't know yet. Is it playing or not? No, not yet. Yeah, there's nothing there, is there? It feels like the accelerator can be snapped. There's no acceleration cable, but it's out by the feel of it. They're now last in the convoy and a sitting duck. This is not a place to be stranded. <laughs> Larry must try and force the engine to respond. Right, just hold it on for a second, Scotty. I want to make sure they get off OK. The vehicle fawns. I just come up in front and touch down and it started working again. <laughs> That's it. Woo Probably about six on the fuck me over to. Yeah, that's our last one there. That's Whiskey Six. What's this called? Now they've climbed out of the wadi, it's just a mile on to Edinburgh. 
we are on our way back, which is really, really good. But tomorrow, they still have the drive to Camp Bastion, where they'll run the gauntlet of Taliban bombs again. Yeah, people like you. That's no, good, isn't it? Fucking get on, son. Get on now. We'll back now. Get back in the corner. Right, shit, Ted. We need aircut. We all got back in one piece. All the vehicles that come in, we've already got loads, and we'll get parked up. The ones that haven't, we'll park to off to one side. They'll go into Edinburgh, where my fat troop sergeant, Taff Hawkins, has um, prepped them. No, he's not fat. Yeah, he is fat, but he's a good lad. They'll go in there, pick loads up, they'll come back out. Everything's worked out according to plan. It makes a change. But to be fair, I think the trucks usually um, run better on the way home, because they know they're going home, like us. It's not just the convoy that Lee organises to the last detail. Although I'm in the desert and I've got a lot of things on my mind, I'm going home in about 26 days. Can't wait to see my wife Angela, Nikki, Molly and Alex. And I've got plenty of plans. I've done a two-week timetable, which they'll not be happy with because it's rigid and we will stick to that um, with timings. I know um, Alex, Molly and Nikki will probably want to spend some of the uh, money I've saved out here. It's been a long four and a half months. Tomorrow, the road warriors will head home to Camp Bastion. But the Taliban know they're coming. Hopefully, we'll leave here at the back of five. The insurgents know we're coming. They've had plenty of time to lay in or dig in some real good booby traps, IEDs, you know, anything that they want to put down there. So, we'll just need to wait and see for tomorrow. It'll be an exciting day. The road warriors have resupplied British bases at Edinburgh and Musakala. After a hard journey out, they're hoping for a quiet return. We're in the last day of the op. It's um, been a day longer than what expected due to the higher threat, what we uh, encountered on the way up. It's now 0500. We're due to leave at 0515. I've got two major uh, waddies to hit. It's going to get really hot and the guys are going to get knackered and they're going to start getting a northern dog. So it's important that we've got to keep them active, uh, keep their minds alert and try and make sure that we get there in, in as good time as possible. Larry knows that the Taliban are waiting for them. I was dreading leaving um, Eddie. I was, I was really like quite worried about it. But now I'm on the move, I'm all right. We're just probably about um, eight to ten k's uh, southwest of uh, from Edinburgh, making reasonable progress. Uh, but dust conditions are pretty atrocious. Can you even fucking see me? Oh, I, I fucking love it. See if my missus ever fucking moans about dust on top of the telly again. <laughs> in his liaison vehicle, Lee travels in dust-free, air-conditioned luxury. We're making good progress. Unfortunately, the faster you go, the more dust you get. Larry and his crew travel inside a vacuum cleaner. I like to look my best for the ladies, you know. I'm having the piss taken out of me. You won't be able to see it on the camera. But I actually iron my um, UVEX shirt or EVEX shirt. At the end of the day, if you can iron it, iron it. Makes you look smarter. A smart soldier is a switched on soldier. It's not just dust. Soon, it's hotter than the temperature of the human body. It's half past 12, midday. So it's just about getting to the hottest part of the day now. Although it's not as bad as it has been, so it's probably only, I say only, about 38 to 40 degrees. What's that? It's about 108 in it. The, the heat you get at home and the heat you get out here is just completely different. You lean on a vehicle, you get burns. Everything melts. The water just gets warm within a few minutes. When you get a bit of breeze, it's just like you've got a hairdryer blown in your face. Just out here, my, my knees are killing me, my back is killing me. 
fucking love it. I love the fact that I've, I've got two years left and I've fucking... St I, I volunteered for this effectively. It's ridiculous, isn't it? I went into school one day and uh, there were some soldiers asking kids if they wanted to come on a uh, uh, look at life day out in the army. Me and my cousin went, crawling round in mud, doing assault courses, running round, jumping in rivers, and I absolutely loved it. I just thought, yeah, I want to be in the army. I think it's a big achievement, and I've been to Iraq, Bosnia, Northern Ireland, I've been out here twice. I'm, I am proud of myself for doing it. Another vehicle has joined the convoy. There's a vehicle over there. Remember I told you I heard shots? He's tracking us just over the, the ridge line. All oh, Delta call signs, this is Roman 34 Alpha. Just beyond the ridge on the left-hand side, there is a vehicle which has been tracking us and has dicked us. The suspicious car could contain Taliban agents, known as dickers. Yeah, nice. Well, yeah, that's what the dickers do. They, they sit maybe a K or two Ks away from the, the CLP. They radio or phone ahead to their mates, let them know that we're coming, make sure that we're on the same track that they expect us to come on. And that gives their, you know, their, their mates up ahead some chance to go and lay some shit in the ground. I think these Taliban are brave, really, because the 60-odd vehicles on this convoy, every... Every vehicle's got a GPMG with like one and a half thousand rounds in. You know, we've got air cover, Apaches, we've got, you know, everything we need, mortar fire, we've got everything, and they still take us on. You know, four or five Taliban will take us on. 20 miles from the base, the juggernauts are slowing down. Well, unfortunately, we just hit some soft sand. The body's a dry riverbed. So, as you can appreciate by any other river, as soon as it's dried up, it's still soft under the, underneath the wheels. Steep banks on either side. So once a few of the trucks have been up it, because they're such heavy vehicles and they've got the loads on, they just churn it up. Now the convoys come to a dead halt. Oh, he's proper stuck him, isn't he? There's a truck there that's pulling another truck that's broken down. Uh, his wheels are spinning, so that's not good. Pull it forward, I guess, one in, mate, yeah? Ollie, jump in, mate. This is a job for the recovery mechanics, or recce mechs. I love being a recce right. mech. Hello, Hello, Hello. We are the unsung heroes. Um, everybody hates us, really, because we're, we're all always dirty. Uh, always doing our own thing, really, on, on CLPs, but everybody needs us. In charge of the recovery mechanics is Sergeant Shotty Shotbolt. Shotty has had a demanding mission. I'm going to put a debt in there for you. Okay. A debt in there. Okay. Initiate from there. Right. He's already destroyed a wrecked truck to deny the Taliban the use of any of its parts. Beautiful! <laughs> Vehicle denied. How's it going, Shotty? Right. We've got an SVR towing an EPLS bogged in. Um, tried to uh, pull it out of the chain. No traction. Engage the winch. Winch it out. Yeah, yeah, we need to get moving. We can't be sat here. It's not a good place to be. Once we get through these three wadis, touch wood, uh, you know, they'll, hopefully, it won't be as bad. While the convoy is static, it's vulnerable to attack. Shotty and his recce mechs must work fast to get the road warriors back on the road. Oh, man, you fucking love it! That's all right. The helicopters will come back out. Do you mind me waiting to go down the hill? Keep that power up. Keep going, guys. Keep going. Go fast. Keep doing it as you go. Two Apache.
Karachi attack helicopters are called in to keep the Taliban at bay while the convoy gets moving. Oh, yes. Lovely jubbly. Fucking lovely jubbly. The terrorist is fucking shit scared of that bad boy, I tell you. When he's up and about, we don't normally get too much incidents or anything else. Because, he, you know, he can ping them from so far away. Yeah, they're going to escort us straight in, which is good. You can just imagine him sat in there in his fucking air-conditioned cockpit, sucking up fucking pims as he's flying over the top of us. Hello, chap! Four winch jobs in about 100 metres. That's what we're here for. Recovery. That's our job. We do it for the rugby. It's the last of the last of the London Irish, yeah. There. Sorry. We just get moving now. Whiskey six up there now, proving the route. So we're just going to crack on now, and then we'll be out of here. Um, the patrol's pretty much closed up now, so if you just went out the pace, uh, just a normal patrolling pace over. With Apaches watching over them, they head for home. Mm. Just been looking at the lads going through the wadi. Um, seem to have uh, paved up a bit. Um, and now we're in the desert, and we're actually motoring about 70 k's an hour. Oh, there's the donkeys, look. Oh, God, he's got a big bully. <laughs> Rumour has it that nice Mr Stringfellow's going to open uh, open his club for uh, an open invitation for four squad when we get back and give us a free night out in London, which I think is very nice of him. Thanks very much. No, when I finish this tour, I'm going home to get married, and that's, that's what keeps me going. But obviously the lads as well. Lads and lasses, knowing that we're all doing it together helps. It's good to sit down sometimes and have a laugh about what happened, you know, how close we all were to death or being blown up and that. It's all right to laugh then, but at the time, it's not fucking funny. <laughs> In Camp Bastion, the road warriors are safe for now. But tomorrow, they'll start preparing to do the whole thing again. I'm fucked. Every time, every time I get back, it takes me even two days to recover from one of these things. Long journey. A lot of uh, IED finds on the way. Uh, and apparently it was a bit dusty, but I've not looked at them in so I couldn't tell you. Overall, from my side, yeah, the lads worked really well. And as a whole, Although we did have um, one ID strike, uh, there's no casualties. It's a vehicle what we can't use no more. But you know, the two guys are safe and well. It's an exciting day for Shotty's children when he arrives home for two weeks' leave. five months of the day, actually. Um, but for birthday tomorrow as well, so I'm pleased to be home with my wife and children. A little baby at home as well, I'm going to see in a, in a, in a couple of hour or so. So I'm looking forward to spending a good two weeks at home and then back out there for the next six weeks. In just a fortnight, he'll be back pulling trucks out of the Afghan dust. Next time on Road Warriors Extra Mile. 15 suicide vests have been brought into the area. Send him! Come on! To get moving, they need to close right up! This is the worst place it could possibly have broken down. 